So, today is the final, wow, did I just say, final message on the promised land, and uh, which way to the promised land, and now uh, we've, been, we've been all over this thing, I mean, from, from beginning to end, and now uh, today's the last, and, and in, in many ways, there's no way to kind of finish this, but yet at the same time, there is, and this one's going to be a little challenging, because if we really want to enter into the promises, there's certain things that are hindering us that are stopping us. And we've talked about a lot of those things, but we've also said what it takes to enter in. So let's stand. We're going to read just a couple of verses of Scripture. We're going to go to our famous Scripture. Don't put it up there. Don't put it up there. 1 Corinthians chapter... No, no, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. But we're going to go and start with a little uh, verse before so we kind of get it again. And I want you to listen to it because there's some key words that are being said. And I want us to look. Therefore, when I was planning this, okay, are all of us planning on going into the promises of God? Are we, do we have a desire? Okay, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? You know, sometimes we make decisions on our emotions and stuff like that. But do we do it lightly or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh? That flesh, man, come on, that flesh. We'll talk about the flesh a little bit today. That which, that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. What it's saying in a sense is that, listen guys, if I say yes, then I need to stay with my yes. If I say no, I need to stay with my no. There's certain things that I know are wrong for me and I need to say no to them, no! And I need to say yes to the things that are Okay, and that's the thing. So let's go to verse 20. I'm just going to skip 18 and 19. We'll just go on to 20. For all the promises of God in Him are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. And it's the same thing again. God, God said yes to us. God said yes. Yes. Turn to someone and say, God said yes to me. Now, the question is, are you going to say yes to him? You know, or is it yes one day, and on Monday, no? On Tuesday, yes? On Wednesday, maybe? Don't let not our yes be no, and our no be yes. Let's let our yes be yes, and our no be no. That's what this is saying. For all God's promises are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. God wants to make yes happen through our lives. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much again for the opportunity. Lord, today we want to just say yes to you. We want to say yes to your will. We want to deny ourselves. We want to crucify the flesh. We're not trying to make decisions lightly here. We know the things that we need to do and the things that need to happen in our lives need a strong yes. We need to be committed, surrendered, And we cannot continually compromise and be in and out. I ask, Lord, that you would lead us in to the promises of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. So, one of the things with this is in mind that we really understand this is what God wants. So I simply, the title of my message today in some ways is say yes to the promise. And I know that's part one. I mean, I'm just going to put that up there. I've got four little points that I want to make today. Yes to the promise. And now, if we've talked about all of this wilderness stuff, it's time for us to enter in to the promised land. Okay? And if we're entering into the promised land, we've got to leave Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, because that's all wilderness stuff. Now we need to enter into the book of Joshua. 
And the book of Joshua tells us a little bit of how they entered into the promised land. And so, I mean, I could go to a lot of places. We know what the instruction was, that we should be courageous, not to be afraid, that everywhere that our foot will trot will belong to us. He actually gives us the dimension or the, the, the area of, of the land. He actually defines it and says this from the Euphrates. All of this is going to belong to you. It belongs to you. And uh, do not be afraid. Uh, and it says, don't meditate on my word. Make sure that you understand the things that I have for you. They're awesome. They're great. And so this is all the things that were told to the children of Israel. And then Joshua said, okay, it's time to go. So in verse 10 of chapter 1, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourself, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go into the promised land which the Lord your God has given you to possess. Now, I don't know if you can read into this a little bit, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. Number one, Joshua is actually told to go throughout the camp. This is what I do. I mean, that's what my job is. Every Sunday is to kind of come to you and say to you, listen, it's time. It's time for us to enter in. It's time for us to go after the promises of God. And here he says, I want you to go throughout and prepare yourself. Get ready. Make the provision. Whatever you need to do to enter into the promises, get yourself ready. Do that. And then it says in three days, within three days. Why these three days? And I'm going to share something with you here. This is so connected to God. It is so connected to the the overall plan of God, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, and when he rose, how many days? Three days. Okay, from the time that we get out of our junk and we get into this, we have to say that God wants us to die to ourselves, and he wants us to come alive in him. And if we understand that he died for us, and then three days he rose for us, if we want to enter into the promises, that's why he said yes. When Jesus said yes, this is what happened in the garden. He was praying. He says, Lord, you know what? I don't really want this to happen. I don't want to die. I mean, literally, sometimes we don't get this, but Jesus became flesh and he dwelt among us. And so he can relate to flesh. He can relate to the word became flesh. That's John chapter 1, verse 14. You want to look it up. The word became flesh. And so the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld The only begotten, full of grace and truth. And yet he struggled with this and he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I don't want my will here, Lord. I want your will. What he was saying is, I'm not going to say no to you. I'm going to say yes. I know this is not what I want, but I need to say yes. Because in three days, I am going to conquer hell, death, and the grave. And I'm going to show my people that I love that they can conquer this fleshly nature in them and they need to surrender to me and he said yes and we need to say yes and this is what we have and so let's go in and possess because God's given us something God's giving us something through Jesus Christ that we need to get a hold of God has given us life and that eternal and a lot of times we hold on to our selfish things instead of really letting go and letting God bring us into the promises of God so let me read a little further so just, uh, where were we? Uh, so they answered. Oh yeah, verse 16. So they answered Joshua saying, all that you've commanded us, we will do. Whether you go uh, send us, we will go. So what are they saying? They're saying, yes, yes, we agree. So turn to someone and say, yes, I agree. I want to enter in. So just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only Lord your God be with us as he was with Moses. So did they heed everything that Moses said? No. Do you guys heed everything I say? No. No. But anyway. <laughs> Verse 18. Now this is where it gets a little trouble, troublesome. Whoever rebels against your commandments and does not heed your words in all that you command shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Ooh, wait a minute. I don't like that. So what he's saying in a sense is, listen, you have a choice. Either you're going to have life or you're going to have death. If you obey God, there's life. If you don't obey God, there's a lot of death and a lot of pain and a lot of issues that happen in your life. So let's see what happens. When we really honor God, and I I think you understand this, but when, when this happened and they said, yes, we want to honor you, God began to tell them exactly what he wanted. 
Now, I, I can tell you there's another story here that I don't have time to get into, but there's this Jordan River, and we've heard about this Jordan River a lot. But it starts at a place called Adam. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. It starts in a place called Adam, and it flows all the way down, and as it flows down, it becomes a very rushing kind of force, and it's, it's overflowing the banks. It's, it's quite large, and there to cross over, and uh, how do we cross over? You can read about this, and, and God says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take the Ark of the Covenant. I want you to take the priests. I want you to just kind of put it on the shoulders, and as they step into the water, it's going to start dissipating and then they can cross over to the other side so guess what they did they did exactly what what the instructions were they actually followed through with that they put their foot into the water and it began to dissipate now this thing was flowing i mean this was not just a little river this was a flowing river okay and when this happened and there's something that we need to understand about god god is trying to show us something it seems like this thing this atom this flesh river that we deal with in life is so overwhelming that we have issues with, with life on a consistent basis. And, uh, and yet God says, you know what? Honor me. Put my word and put my presence into action and flesh will have to move. The flesh will have to be set aside. And so what happens is as they walk through that Jordan River, they made it to the other side. Is that maybe why Jesus got baptized? In the Jordan? Is that maybe one of the reasons that he was trying to show again the example of dying to, the, dying to self in the flesh in the Jordan? Dying to that? You can read about that. I mean, these are kind of like types and shadows. But I want us to understand, once they got to the other side, something began to happen as well. And so I want to read this in Joshua chapter 5. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites who were on the west side of the Jordan and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we had crossed over that their hearts melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the children of Israel. What it's saying in a sense is that, listen, when we obey God, no one really can stand in our way. And it's like almost we set when we truly honor God, it melts the enemy's heart. And all, the world is kind of confused with this. But I tell you what, when you truly surrender and you go through and you let God do a work in you, it's like, maybe they don't say it, but they know that, that you're a little different. The world knows that when you truly have surrendered your life to God, you live your life a, di a, a, a different way. And all these kings and all these worldly things begin to look at you and go, wow, this is pretty... It actually tells us that Rahab knew in her heart. Rahab knew. And now, who's Rahab? Rahab was in the city there of, of Jericho, and she knew that the children of Israel were going to conquer Jericho. She knew. So she had a choice to make. Do I uh, give in and just give up, or do I surrender to, to, to the same God that they're serving? And she surrendered. And she was the only one that was saved. And I'm going to tell you something. People, when they see our lives and they see the difference in our lives, they know something is happening. So it says here that as, the, as this was happening, that God began to give them more instruction. Now, this is the part that's going to uh, cause a little pain for some of us, okay? And I'm not trying to be crude here, but let's talk about it just for a second. In Joshua chapter 5. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourself and circumcise the sons of Israel again a second time. Then Joshua circumcised their sons whom he raised up in their place, for they were circumcised because they had no, not been circumcised on the way. So it was when they had finished the circumcision of all the people that they stayed in the place at the camp till they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. Now, how many of you like to talk about circumcision? I don't. It's not one of my favorite subjects. But at the same time, one of the things is God's trying to show us something. There's always a type and a shadow. So what is he trying to show us here? And this is the thing is, it's a foreskin. It's something that we, we would consider Joshua. 
Abraham was told, he said, if you want, you want to be in covenant with me, you need to circumcise your kids. This is why you circ- circum because I want the flesh to be cut off. I want the flesh to be cut off. So what is God saying to us? And I want us to explain, I want, I want you to know something. This is not some weird uh, practice that the Jewish people were doing just because of a physical thing. It was also a spiritual thing. So I want to teach you something. No, my point number two, no to the flesh. And I want to go to Romans chapter 2. For he is not a Jew, he is one outwardly. Okay, he's not a Jew just because he gets circumcised. Because Jews had to get circumcised. Nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So one of the things that I'm going to share with you is that God is trying to say something to us. He says, listen, if you really want to enter into the promise, if you really want to live in the promised land, you need to deal with something. You need to deal with your flesh. You need to cut your flesh and you need to say no to the flesh. Our heart is deceitfully and wicked. Did you know that? Sometimes we think things and do stuff that is so inappropriate and God says you need to cut that off. You need to be honest. If you really want to be a true follower of God, you need to cut, you need to get out the knife, and you need to cut off and circumcise your heart. Because the flesh wants to rule. The flesh wants wants things. The flesh has desires. It's selfish. It is very um, perverted in a lot of ways. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about us. We're all in this together. And when I say to you the flesh wants to mess with us, it messes with us on a daily basis. And if you're not honest about that, you're not being truthful. Because the flesh is a way that tries to trick us into saying this is what we need. And then once we have it, we feel more empty and more unfulfilled than we did before. We have these desires. I mean, you can go into all kinds of directions with this, and I can but the, the, again, it's what it says. It says, because the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, is against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So if it's not subject, guess what we need to do is cut it. We need to say, flesh, you're not going to rule. Flesh, you're not going to have authority in my life. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 8. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, Christ, he is not his. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. So guess what? We don't owe anything to the flesh. The flesh rips us off all the time. Figure it out. Look back in your life and tell me, any time that you honored the flesh, did it help you or did it hurt you? When you honored God, did it help you or hurt you? So who are you a debtor to? Who's the one who died for you? Who's the one that conquered death for you? Who's trying to, any time that there are issues in your life, in your family, in relationships, at work, anywhere, in anything, if you honestly look at it, somehow the flesh was involved in making your life miserable. Either your boss was selfish, or some employee was not doing the right thing, or somebody ripped you off, or someone, you know, and even in our own lives, maybe I didn't do the right thing, and I noticed, why was that? Oh, it's the flesh. The flesh. And I'm telling you, it is such a part of our lives, and I'm telling you, it it eats at us on a consistent basis. Look look at uh, Romans uh, 13, I mean 8, 13, it says, For if we live according to the flesh, we will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Let us walk properly as in the day, not revelry and in drunkenness, not in lewdness, in lust, not in strife and in envy. These are just a couple examples of the flesh. 
What happens when we're drunk? What happens when we're lewd? What happens when we're full of lust? What happens when we're full of strife? What happens when we're full of envy? What happens? People lose. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Something wants something inside of you and you need to say no to it. You've got to cut it off. Man, does it mess with you? It messes with me. And I want, this my, my third point here is this is something we have to choose daily. It's, we choose daily. This is, I, I wish we could just make one, a decision one time. Oh, I'd love that. I, I'd, love, I'd love the idea of, you know, just, hey, hey, this is how it works. I come to the cross, you know, I surrender my life to Jesus Christ, I give everything, and then from that day on I have no more problems. I don't even have to tie my shoes anymore because, you know, my shoes are, I don't have to worry about that stuff because, you know, once, once I'm saved, you know, that's, uh, that's all I have to worry about. And I think some people who come to the cross they believe that that's going to happen, and then the next day when they come across some junk in their lives, they go, Look, I thought I gave my heart to God yesterday. <laughs> and guess what? You did, but now you need to say yes again today. You need to say yes. You need to say no to the flesh. Yeah, are there some weird desires in you? Yes. Are there temptations? Yes. You know, when you decide, oh, I'm going to quit smoking. And you say yes, and then the next day, oh, I'm, I'm kind of like wanting this. <laughs> Guess what? That's where you have to say, choose no. You know, I, 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 I know I'm not going to get sensual anymore, and I'm not going to look at pornography. And then, you know, you're good for a day or two, and then all of a sudden, oh, uh, that's where you need to realize that you need to make a decision. You know, when you get a little money or something, and you buy something stupid again, you go, well, I thought I didn't have that problem anymore. <laughs> it's a decision that we have to do daily. Let me read to you just a couple of scriptures. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are not beneficial or helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the bondage of any. So God's saying something. Listen, he's saying, I've made you a free moral agent. I'm going to give you a choice. You can choose. You need to know that some of the things you choose are going to help you, and some of the things you choose are not going to help you. You need to learn your lesson. You need to learn. Uh, when I drink, I have problems. But then, three months later, well, I think I can handle it now. And then you say things like, you know what? I need the church. I really need to go. And then after about a month of coming to church, well, I don't really need to go this Sunday. I can kind of just stay home. You know, what is it about us that we, we don't realize the struggle that we're in? God wants us to take us into the promises. And it's like you can't go back and forth. And that's the issue. I think in some ways we like uh, to get baptized about a thousand times. We're one time over here in the promised land and the next we go back into the wilderness. And then we go, okay, God, I need to go back over the Jordan. And so we go back into the promise and then we go back. We are so yes, no people in our lives, it's not even funny. And God is saying, when will you be honest with yourself and say no to the flesh, cut it off and say yes to the spirit? Oh, look, food for the stomach and stomach for the food. But God will destroy both, et, both of it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, for the Lord's body. And I mean, we can go on. I don't even know if I want to read all this. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. But at the same time, who are we connecting to? Who are we allowing our lives to be connected to? Are we connecting more to the flesh or more to the spirit? And I want to skip a couple of these things because, I mean, I could. There's so much in here that can mess with us in regards to this. So I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And it says, O Corinthians, but I would like to entitle it, O Neapolitans. <laughs> it's the same thing, okay? We have spoken openly to you. Our hearts is wide open. 
you're not restricted by us, but you're restricted by your own affections. I've preached to you from, a, from an open heart for the last couple of months on this subject. And I have dealt with every aspect of it. And I'm not trying to control your life. That's the last thing I want to do. And it's not my job. It's the Holy Spirit's job. And you need to listen to Him. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what, and what accord has Christ with Baal? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. What does God want? He wants, he wants to dwell with us. He wants to hang out with us. He really does. But you know what? He can't hang out with you if you're hanging out with some stuff that doesn't work. If you're, if you're a believer and you're hanging out with stuff that's not believing, it's going to cause conflict for you. Well, you know, it's a simple thing. If I keep going to the bar before, no, before you know it, I'm going to start drinking. If I go and do something stupid and hang out with certain things that I know I shouldn't, eventually I'm going to start doing that. But if I put myself not in that situation, that's what he's saying. If I don't put myself in a dark place, guess what? I'm going to live in the light. And if I hang around people who are in the light, I'm going to be in the light. But if I hang around people who don't believe, now what, what am I saying with that? I, I, I need to hang out with people who are yes people. I need to hang around people who are going to encourage me to walk the way, not people who are going to discourage me. Because unbelievers, oh, that's a bunch of baloney. That's a bunch of baloney. I don't even understand what you're doing over there. What are you going to church for? That's ridiculous. Come on, let's have a little fun. That's exactly what they do. Before you know it, you're, you're sucked into this. And you know what I'm saying is true. Verse 18, And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the Spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. What is he saying? What is this saying? Come on. Therefore, having these promises. Okay, since we have the promises of God, and since God said yes to us, and since we can enter into the promise, let's cleanse ourselves. Let's wash ourselves. Let's cut some stuff off. Let's get rid of those things that will hinder us from entering into the promise of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. You know exactly, and so do I, what I need to cleanse. Right now, you know what you need to get rid of. And if you tell me you don't, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Because you know there's some stuff in your life right now that needs to be cleansed. How do I know? I don't see myself wearing the same clothes week after week without washing it. Why? Because I know I get dirty. And we live in a dirty world. Both physically and spiritually. And the devil wants us to get dirty. And the devil wants us to get used to that. He wants us to wallow in it. Do you know what it talks about the prodigal son? He started hanging out with pigs. And guess what? He started liking it, and he started wanting to eat its food. You know? Now we say, that's pretty sick. You know, there's another scripture that says it this way. How is it that a dog returns to its own vomit? Okay? This is the thought. At one point we realize, this is pretty sick what I'm doing. And we realize it, and we walk away from it, and then guess what? We go back to it. I know I'm being, I'm, I mean, this, is, this, this fleshly stuff, this circumcision is not pretty stuff to talk about, but you know what? It's in our lives. And I don't care if you've been in church and you're an elder in this church. I don't care if you're the pastor of this church, you have this issue. We all have this issue. But this is the battle we fight daily to conquer this and to be overcomers. Are you ready for the conclusion? Get out the sword. 
Let's get out the sword of the Spirit. Let's do a little cutting today. Well, Andrew, I don't know if I want that. I was watching a little uh, Thanksgiving stuff over the last few days, and they showed this Alaskan Thanksgiving stuff where a guy was sharpening a knife and he was going to go out and get the turkey. And they, um, they said, well, we're, we're going to just let the turkey, and they let, literally, they let the turkey walk around, and the guy had kind of like a samurai sword. And he had it really sharp. He walked around and says, okay, this, this turkey's not even going to realize what's going to happen to it. And while it's sitting there, and all of a sudden, the guy takes the, tur- the, the, sam- the sword, and he goes, Whoosh! but of course they don't show it. Because we can't show that on TV. But we can show other things. You know, we can show people in bed, and we can show all kinds of weird stuff, but we can't show. And so the turkey got his kid cut off. But, you know, we, we know that that's natural. But none of us really think about the turkey getting its head cut off. But all of us enjoy turkey on Sunday, pretty much. But the way the turkey got on that plate was it had to die. And I'm going to say something to us. Let's be honest. God wants to sharpen. You know why? You know why? I'm going to say this. Do you know why we don't read this Bible? You know why we don't read it very often? You know why? Because it'll, it'll mess with us. Because if we get the knife out... If we get the knife out and we read this stuff, we're going to have to cut off some things in our lives. Or we have to put the Bible down and say, no, I don't believe that applies to me today. (laughs) It's the truth. So let's read it, just a couple of verses here. So he drove out the man, and he placed a cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned away everyone to guard the way to the tree of life. Okay. Okay. Joyce, would you go into my office and get my sword, my samurai <laughs> sword? Let me, let me tell you something. God's saying something, and maybe you don't get this, but God's trying to say something to us. We are called tree of life, right? And it actually tells us here in Genesis that there was a cherubim that was placed at the garden, and it had guarded the tree of life. And the only way you could get to the tree of life was to make it through the sword, Right? Only way you could make it was through the sword. And so one of the things that I have here in my office, which was a gift to me a long time ago, just a little, a little, a little blade. Okay. And so this is the thing that I'm telling you. If you want God in your life, you have to face the sword. You have to face the sword of the Spirit. And if you're willing... To be cut by this, you are able to enter into the promises. If you're not willing to be cut by this, this is actually what it says in Acts. They were cut to their heart. When Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, they were cut to their heart and they said, what must I do? And they said, repent, be baptized, and you will be filled with the Spirit. They were cut And they were able to enter into the promises of God. And a lot of times, we don't want this in our lives. We want the blessings of God, but we don't want the correction of God. We want the favor of God, but we do not want to be challenged and say, listen, you can't have this and this. You need to choose whether you want the spirit or you want the flesh in your life. Something needs to be cut. The children of Israel couldn't enter into the promise. They couldn't even conquer their first city without having circumcision. And we're not talking about circumcision in the natural. We're talking about circumcision of the heart. Let me read to you and finish this out with just a a scripture. Hebrews chapter 4. It's the same thing again. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not have afterwards have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the children or the people of God. For he who has entered his rest 
has himself also ceased from his works, and God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Of the heart. Oh, you mean, again, we're dealing with circumcision of the heart. Listen, when I read Scripture to you, and actually I skipped some stuff that I could have just... I don't need... I don't, my desire is not to, not to tell you how screwed up you are. We already know that. Our job, in a sense, is to come here today and to say, listen, I want to tell you something. God has more for you than you realize. He has more favor, more blessing, more promises than you can throw a stick at. Matter of fact, he says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. But the question is, if you do not cut off certain things, you will not experience the favor and the blessing of God. You will stay in the wilderness. Is it fun to deal with our flesh? No. Is it a struggle? Yes. Can we conquer it? Yes, with God's help. Are we willing to cut it off? That's the question. Are we willing to deal with our flesh? Bow your heads. I believe with all of my heart that God wants to take this church, He wants to take our lives to a whole other level. But unless, and, and this is something I'm going to say to you, unless you and I deal with our flesh and say, we're cutting off this flesh, we're cutting off this nature in us, this sinful nature on a daily basis, we say yes to the promises of God. I don't know of anyone here who wants to say no. Every one of you, I believe, want to say yes. And God wants to do wonders among us. He wants to take us into the promise. But unless we're willing daily to deal with this battle and daily willing to surrender to this, and if we choose to break through to victory, God has some very special things for us. It's time to get out the sword. And I'm going I, I, to tell you something, and if you don't get this, look up at me just for a second. This is the tree of life in many ways. It's a sample of it. It's the cross. It's Jesus Christ who died on the cross. And he stands here and he says, the only way you can get there is by believing my word. And if you're not willing to be cut by my word, if you're not willing to honor my word and surrender and repent, you can't come to the cross. But if you'll honor and let your flesh be cut off, you can come to the cross. Because that's what this sample is. When Jesus Christ, what happened? He died. His flesh died on the cross. That's exactly the same thing that needs to happen to us. So right now, one more time, I want to say to you, you know whether or not you've been honest in this area of your life. And if today you want to surrender to the Lord and you want to say yes to Him, don't do it lightly and don't do it according to the flesh, but do it according to the Spirit. If you know that you want to say yes to Jesus today and you want to enter into His promises, maybe you, you've been kind of playing the game, but you're serious today. I want to see your hand. I see those hands see those hands let's stand see it, it, it kind of makes sense. sense when we have a sword here and we look at it like that but one of the things is that every Sunday when I preach from the word of God guess what this is this is the sword this is the sword and every day we're, we're challenged in this area of that we realize that God's protecting the tree of life with the, with the flaming sword. 
But he's not trying to stop you from the tree of life. But he wants you to be honest about how you get to the tree of life. So if you raise your hand, if you want to surrender, if you want to enter into, if you want to eat of the tree of life, come to the cross right now. Just come. If you raise your hand, come. Come on, let's give praise to the Lord. used and cut up people and hurt them but if it's used in the right way it surgically removes what needs to be removed and it heals remember what it said remember what happened to the children of Israel when they crossed over they came to a place called Gilgal it's still called that today but he left them there till they were healed God's not trying to wound you God's not trying to hurt you God's not trying to slice you up. But he wants to make a precise cut. And this is what it says. It says, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than to any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. He knows exactly where divides certain things. He knows that we're soulish, and he knows that we need to be in the spirit. He also even divides to the point of the joints and marrow. I mean, you know how minute that is? God's not interested in making some blood cut. He's making a precision cut to bring you life. So guess what? This week, guys, this week, I want you to say this to yourself over and over again. God, I want to be cut in the right places. I want to be convicted in the right places. And I want to deal with my flesh. I'm not talking about them right now. I'm talking about us, all of us, every one of us. Let's let God do some surgery in us. And then next week or this week when we have an opportunity at work or at home or wherever we are, let's let that bring fulfillment because all God wants to do really is heal us. He wants to heal us and fulfill us and bless us. Let's pray together. Father, I come to you. And I receive your love. I receive the sword of the Spirit. I believe in your word. I believe you sent your word to heal. Not to cut me up. And today I receive that cut. That cut of life. That separates me from the flesh. And I will live in the Spirit. Today I say yes to you. And from this day forward, I say yes to you. And from this day forward, I say no to the flesh. And I will fight the good fight of faith. And I thank you for loving me. Thank you for sharing the truth with me. And the truth will set me free. And I am free in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.